Last week, I shared with you my poor man's version of the Astera Titan Tubes Kit, the Nanguang Pavo Lights. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use two of those tubes to create a source very similar to a book light, but way more compact and super convenient to set up. Introducing the Turkey Sandwich Light. <laughs> More often than not, book lights tend to take up a whole lot of room, they require a little bit of time to build, and they generally also require at least three stands to help create that beautiful soft source that they're so popular for. Not to mention you'd need a light with a high enough output to bounce back to deliver decent enough results. Now if you're working with a minimal crew or a limited gear list, what tends to happen is you just opt for the simpler, quicker route, which is to just point your light at any nearby wall or ceiling, and that does work in a pinch, but it just doesn't quite distribute the light in the same fashion that a good old book light would. Recently, a fellow cinematographer was sharing with me some BTS photos from a feature film that he's currently working on. He was asking other DPs if they had ever seen anything like this before. He said, look what this gaffer had on set. He calls it the turkey sandwich. And after some time of picking this DP's brain, I started figuring out what exactly this so-called turkey sandwich was really made out of. And to be quite frank, it's pretty damn simple. All you need is two RGB tube lights, four tube clips, a sheet or two of two by three coroplast, Coroplast is like this corrugated plastic type of poster board, which is conveniently available over on Amazon Prime. As always, links are down in the description below. A couple thin pieces of wood, no longer than two feet in length, some quarter 20 bolts, anything under two inches will do, a quarter 20 drill bit, some quarter 20 washers, a piece of aluminum strut, no longer than two feet, a cheese plate of some sort, I just use this 15 millimeter rod with quarter 20 holes in it, a ball head, a quarter 20 light stand adapter, and any diffusion material of your choice. You know, more often than not, I just opt for the cheaper frosted shower curtain option, which we're actually using in this setup right here, right now. And I just love the way it distributes the light. But do keep in mind, we also have in the map box a Tiffin soft net filter, which we discussed and looked at in a previous video. So let's break this turkey down. First, the coroplast. Now the coroplast is essentially the bounce card. It's what the tubes will be shining their light directly into, but it's also what everything on the fixture is literally attached to. So the coroplast is the core of the turkey sandwich. I guess you could say it's the turkey. The cool part is if you order the coroplast off of Amazon, you get two sheets of it and the two by three size is perfect for the two footer pavo tubes. What I ended up doing is stacking the two sheets together because it not only made for a stronger foundation, but now it's a way better bounce because with them both stacked together, they're no longer translucent. So what you're gonna wanna do first is measure some marks on the coroplast where you want the tube clips to go. You're gonna wanna make sure that they're all an even distance from the edge because you don't want crooked tubes, but you also wanna make sure that they're not too far apart. On the first go around, I actually measured way too far apart because I forgot to account for the ends of the pavo tubes and that's where the controls are. So you just wanna measure that distance so they sit right under the base of each end of the tubes. So once you've done your measurements and you've made your marks for where each one of the tube clips will go, that's where the pieces of wood come in. The two pieces of wood that you use should be no longer than two feet. As you can see here, these little one foot pieces work fine. And also they should be fairly thin. My first go around of trial and error, I went with these scrap pieces of two by four, but I realized very quickly that that was way overkill as they're much too thick and way too heavy. So it turned out that these little pieces were perfect. They're not too thin, but yet just thick enough to still hold the weight of the tubes. And what's cool is you can go to Home Depot, go back to the lumber section where you can hand cut the wood yourself and you can usually find these scraps. That's where I found both of these little scraps. And when you take them up to the front register, you just tell them that you found them in the back. You're not sure what the price is and they just gave them to me for free. So as you'll see here in this example, I clamped the pieces of wood down to the coral 
Neuroplast over where my marks were on the opposite side. And then took my quarter 20 drill bit and drilled the holes through the Coroplast and the wood at the same time. After you drill your holes, you can drop in your quarter 20 bolts. The two inch long ones are fairly perfect for this. And you could even probably go for one and a half inch length because on the Coroplast side is where your tube clip will be attached. Once you have the top clips attached, you do the same for the bottom half. Now we have all four of our tube clips attached and we're ready to go. So now that we got this turkey all set up to hold our two foot RGB tube lights, the next step is figuring out a way to make it super sturdy, but at the same time, easy to throw onto a stand. Now there's a few different options to go about doing this, but after running around Home Depot for way longer than I promised my wife and annoying the complete hell out of her, I finally settled on this aluminum strut and cheese plate combo. I just attached the aluminum strut right down the middle of the board and used some extra quarter 20 bolts to do so. This little 15 millimeter cheese rail I had lying in the bottom of my AKS bag seemed to be pretty perfect and was super easy to attach to the aluminum strut using some threaded washers. The cheese plate is nice because you can easily attach a ball head of your choice and then on the bottom of the ball head you can thread a quarter 20 light stand adapter so now this thing can pop onto a light stand and still have complete rotation of vertical to horizontal or you can ditch the ball head altogether, attach the light stand adapter directly to the cheese rail, then slide it onto a baby pin, which can then be attached to a gobo head on a C-stand. Now there's one more option you could go, which involves completely bypassing the cheese plate, the light stand adapter, and the ball head altogether. All you have to do is take a duck clamp and clamp it directly to the aluminum strut and then throw it onto any stand of your choice. So now that we have this thing all rigged up and ready to attach some tubes, the real question is, how the hell is this thing a book light? Well, that's where the real ingenuity of this whole fixture comes into play. The trick is when you're attaching the tubes to the tube clips, you wanna make sure that they're shining directly into the Coroplast. Then you take any diffusion material of your choice. This just happens to be unbleached muslin. You throw it over the entire fixture, completely covering the tubes, and you clip it to the top of the Coroplast board. Now all of that bounce light radiating from the tubes hitting into the Coroplast board quickly becomes diffused. And any level of warmth or softness is completely up to whatever type of diffusion material you choose. What I've already been using on a couple paid gigs is this super inexpensive frosted shower curtain. And it's really helping me come up with some pretty unique and awesome looks. But while we're here, how about we try out some various types of diffusion on the turkey sandwich light right now. First, let's look at just the tube lights shining directly onto me. This was with no turkey light at all, just naked tubes. Now we are looking at the Pavo tubes when they are on the turkey, shining directly into the Coroplast, but with no diffusion wrapped on the outside. So just simply bounced light. And here's those two shots side by side. Now, here's the turkey with the frosted shower curtain clipped on. But let's see what happens when we replace the frosted curtain with a normal piece of bleached muslin. Want to add a little bit of warmth without actually changing the color temperature on your tubes? Let's replace the bleached muslin with a sheet of unbleached muslin. Now let's go with some more traditional options. Here's the turkey light with a sheet of 216 full diffusion made by Lee. And a sheet of 250 half diffusion and now a sheet of full grid. And finally, something else I've been experimenting with lately, this sheet of webbing material I picked up at Joann Fabrics. I like to do that sometimes. I'll come by Joann's just to see what all textiles they have on sale, because why not? I actually recently had to upgrade my rag bag to this gigantic duffel bag just to keep all my scraps of fabric in. Whew. But to be honest, it's mainly just full of blacks for negative fill. But that's another video for another day. There you have it, folks. I encourage all of you to have a go at creating your own turkey sandwich light. And please feel free to leave any comments down below on how to make the turkey even better. Another DP already gave me the awesome idea of splitting the Coroplast directly down the middle on the opposite side of where the aluminum strut is so you can easily fold it and make it even more travel friendly. Not a bad idea. As always, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to go behind the scenes to watch how I use this turkey sandwich light on actual paid gigs that I've been hired to be the cinematographer for, then I invite you all to the Dog Times Productions Patreon community, where I take you on the inside of what it's really like being a freelance underdog in the Super Bowl filmmaking community, otherwise known as Los Angeles, California. Till next time, that's a wrap.